Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. When I finish preaching and teaching the Word of God, I love to give people an opportunity to respond. And I mean by that uh, to profess their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to apply the truth to their lives, to obey what it is God has said. Why is that? Because you can't be neutral on God's truth. You either accept it or reject it. You believe it or you don't believe it. You obey it or you don't obey it. And Scripture is filled with God giving invitations for people to respond to his revelation. Now, what the invitation looks like may vary from meeting to meeting, uh, even from message to message. But I truly believe this, uh, that God's word is to be applied. This is where we move from being hearers of the word to being doers of the word. The invitation is really just the beginning of the application. It's not the end of it because we're to continue to apply the truth long after the meeting is done. Uh, But when the message comes to a close, we ought to be brought to this point. What will I do with what I have heard? And so uh, Paul brings the people in Acts chapter 13 at the conclusion of his message to a place of application. He makes it deeply personal. Listen to Acts chapter 13 beginning in verse 38. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you. The fascinating thing is, in the closing words of Paul's sermon in Acts chapter 13, he narrows everything he has preached, thousands of years of history, all of the different events and characters he's spoken of. He brings them down to basically two categories. He says, all of you fall in one of two categories. You either believe or you do not believe. We've already looked at the response to the sermon. We jumped ahead just a little bit, but if you take verse 42 and verse 43, guess what you find? Two responses. Some believe, some do not believe. There have always been those two categories. Uh, There are those who obey the truth and those who reject the truth. I wonder, which category are you in today? Uh, There is a divine invitation being given at this moment to God's Word. What are you doing with it? Are you receiving it? Are you making it your own? Are you applying it? Or are you saying no to God? Because that's very dangerous. There is both a mercy and a warning in this invitation. Notice, first of all, the mercy. He says, through this man, that's Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. So he said, if you'll believe on Christ, if you'll you'll follow Christ, You receive forgiveness of sins, and you are justified. Oh, that's glorious. Isn't that glorious? By the way, both of those are Godward words. Uh, Who do we need forgiveness from? The God that we've offended. Who do we need to be justified before? Uh, The God who sees us as we really are. But God says, if you'll believe on my Son as your Savior, if you'll take the Lord Jesus Christ for your sins, God says, I'll forgive you. Would you like to be forgiven today? Oh, dear one, you, do you know you've offended a holy God? You can be forgiven. There is forgiveness in the person of Jesus Christ, and it gets even better. You can not only be forgiven, you can be justified. Uh, forgiveness, that deals with the negative. Justified, that's a positive word because it literally means the righteousness of Christ is put on your account, and God now sees you just as if you had never even been a sinner. Think of that. He views you totally different. He changes not just your predicament. He changes your position. 
My friend, God will forgive you and God will justify you today if you will simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. But the very next word in verse 40 changes the whole invitation. He shifts now from the mercy of it to the warning of it. He says, beware. There's a warning in this. And who's the warning for? The warning is for those who will not believe. He said, you despise it. God says, I'm working. I'm working a work in your days, but you won't even believe it. Though a man declared unto you, though a preacher reveal the truth to you from the scriptures, you won't even receive it. You won't make it your own. Recently, I was in a meeting preaching, and I was just preaching on Christ, preaching the gospel. We had a number of people who believed. I thank God for that. One gentleman came to say he'd been in church for decades but had never been born again, and he wanted to know Christ in a personal way. Oh, it was glorious. Another man who had been invited by a friend came, heard the gospel, wonderfully saved. Several people like that. It was tremendous. In that same meeting, though, I met a handful of people who plainly told me they were not believers and they did not respond to the gospel. In fact, some mocked, some questioned, It was a reminder to me that there are always two groups of people in every audience. There are those who believe and those who do not. When the Titanic sank, the white star lines that owned them had a serious situation on their hand because they had hundreds of family members and friends who gathered at the port waiting to receive the ship only to find out that the ship was not coming in. And so they built a huge platform uh, with a, a massive sign on Each side, they put a banner. On one side, it said, known to be saved, and on the other side, known to be lost. Then they printed the names of every passenger on board the Titanic, and they paid a young steward to come out once they could confirm those that had been rescued and those that had been lost at sea, and they would hold up individually a name until someone in the audience would say, that's my mother or that's my brother, that's our son, And once someone in the audience identified with the name, the steward would turn around and post the name on one side or the other. They either posted the name under the banner that said, known to be saved, or they posted it on the side that said, God forbid, known to be lost. You know, when the Titanic left port, it had three classes of passengers, but when it came in, there were only two. There were those who were saved, and there were those who were lost. And I want you to know, you can look at our world through Uh, the lens of economic standing or political party or any number of categorizations. But in the end, when it all comes to the conclusion, there are only two kinds of people in this world. There are those who are saved and there are those who are lost. And God knows who they all are. Someday all will know who they are. Uh, What is true now will be revealed later. In the end, there are only two groups of people, those who believe and those who believe not. Let me give you a couple applications. First of all, if you've never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know for certain that your sins are forgiven and heaven is your eternal home, I want to tell you today, beware. God is working. Even in our days, God is at work. Uh, Don't reject the truth of the gospel. Put your faith in the only way of salvation. His name is Jesus Christ. He will forgive you and he will justify you today. Call on him right now and be saved. And if you are a believer, could I challenge you to do something? Don't just talk about Jesus. Invite people to believe on him. Give your own invitation. Today, speak to someone you love about their soul and then ask them if they'd like to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Some will believe, some will not. But we must do the same thing with all. We must get the message of Christ to them while the invitation is still open. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why enjoying the journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate 
about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.